Okay, I guess we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I know most of you are in here, and for those of you who don't, my name is Jessica Trepanier. I'm an essential oil educator and um, just part of the Acadiana Grows community. So what we're gonna talk about today are using essential oils on the homestead. And is there anyone in here who doesn't use essential oils at all or doesn't know what they are? Okay. So you just have I know use ish, them? but I don't use them. Okay. I gargle or oregano oil when I need to. <laughs> okay, well then I'll do like a little couple brief intros to things, but it won't be like a full 101 class. We're going to assume that we know, you know, pretty much how to use them. Um, and I'm going to share some recipes with you and, and gear toward, uh, really toward animals and plants and things that you can use them for. So um, moving forward, so essential oils are actually, they're basically like the plant's immune system. So simply put, it's um, what comes from the stems, the leaves, the bark, the flower, and it's what's beneficial to the plant and also to us when we use it. And if you think back to like science class when you learned about cells, and the human cell and the plant cell aren't very different. And so because it's natural and because it can, it's small enough to pass through that cell wall, when we use essential oils or when we use essential oils on our animals, um, our cells actually absorb it and utilize it the same way that it would be used in a plant cell. So it's very convenient and that's why it can actually work on things like viruses and bacteria um, as opposed to some synthetic things that can't reach or go through um, a cell wall. That being said, I am obligated to say we don't treat, uh, prevent, or cure any diseases, but I am going to go ahead and share what has worked for me and I will answer any of your questions openly and honestly moving forward. So there are a couple um, just safety things I want to go over first. So hot oil, a hot oil is referring to an oil that is actually hot to the touch if you put it on your skin or spicy if you put it in your mouth. Um, so these are the ones that you would not want to put on your skin without diluting. Likewise, and unless you like that kind of thing, you'd not want to put that in your mouth undiluted. Um, and if you are going to be using essential oils on your body or in your mouth, you want to make sure that you're using a medicinal grade. Um, essential oils are not regulated by the FDA. There are actually no labeling laws with them. So Walmart can tell you you have 100% pure uh, essential oil when really there can be like basically fragrance like Glade in that bottle. Okay, so it's very unfortunate, very misleading. So you need to know the company that you're working with. You need to see third party testing from them. Um, most 98% I would say are synthetic or have synthetic qualities or uh, ingredients and about one percent is going to be like your therapeutic grade and then you have you know then medicinal grade um, so if you have any questions about that or where to get them from after i'd be happy to help you with that just please don't run across town and grab them and then ingest them because it just wouldn't be safe so the other the other safety issue are cats um, you hear a lot about using essential oils with animals and how it's so dangerous. In general, it's not, but with cats, you cannot use citrus oil on them. They just, they lack the enzyme needed. I put protein, I meant enzyme, um, to process that in the body. So if you use citrus oils on them, you're gonna go ahead and cause a problem. It could even kill them depending on the amount of oil that's used. Um, that being said, if you're using a good quality oil and you're diffusing in your home, it should not bother them. Now, if you have them in a kennel and you like have them tinted in there, you would like you would for respiratory issues or something. That's not going to be good for them. They don't they don't need to be in that concentrated citrus either. So really, just moving forward, we're just going to be wise. We're going to dilute. Um, we're not going to overuse. And um, that being said, also I know. Oh, go ahead. Do you know of an oil that can deter cats? Deter cats? I don't. Like if I put citrus oil in dirt mm -hmm. would they stay away from it or probably <laughs> maybe um i can actually look into that okay. because i i saw what you put yeah. today that you need to keep cats out of your garden yeah. i should have looked into that <laughs> what, no, but i think yeah. yeah i think anything strong because animals have sensitive noses anything strong is going to deter them so like for mice it's peppermint spiders it's peppermint I actually didn't put that in here and I should have. You can make a spray bottle and put that along your baseboards. Um, ants supposedly hate wild orange. So even though I boil water and dump on uh, ant piles and things, when you have them in your garden where you can't actually like pour boiling water on them, you can use cornmeal and um, orange essential oil. It's not effective, as effective as boiling water, but it's still the 
corn meal is supposed to swell in their belly and, and heal them that way. Um, deter, you know, I'm trying to think of anything else that deter. I can't think off the top of my head, but if I do, I'll, I'll chime back in with it. Okay, so um, I think before I go into the recipes, I'm just going to talk about, like, in general, what you would want to have just as your basic. Um, say med kit, but basic kit on a homestead where you can pull from and kind of make a baseline of anything. And so I'll go ahead and pass those around. Uh, lavender, everybody knows what lavender is, right? I mean, everybody knows what lavender is. But when you smell this, if you haven't smelled true lavender before, you're going to be shocked because when I first smelled it, I was like, this doesn't smell like lavender because I'm so used to the synthetic. And a lot of people get headaches from synthetic lavender, right? Like I detested what I thought lavender was, which was like those cheap Walmart bath sets that you get in the church white elephant Christmas thing, mm -hmm. do you think? Um, but actually, you know, when you have a good quality lavender, it's gonna be very calming. Um, it's gonna be very soothing to skin. It's one of those that, you know, in the book will take up a, a lot of space because it's good for so many things. And kind of like when in doubt, just like lavender. Off. Yeah. Lavender is also very gentle, so while it's good to dilute with a carrier oil, you don't have to dilute lavender um, unless for some reason you have some type of sensitivity to it. Okay, frankincense. So frankincense is a really good cellular oil. Um, it is one of those that. Yeah. Okay. It uh, actually will pass into the cell wall and prevent it from mutating. So you can infer what that means within the body um, and why it would be so healthy for cell turnover and how it would help promote health in that way. Uh, but this is really great for wounds, uh, scarring, uh, really fast healing. It is also an amplifier. So when you have frankincense and you pair it with something, it's just gonna help that oil work that much better. So sometimes if someone's trying to go to sleep with lavender and they need like just a little more oomph, you can put frankincense with it and that will help boost it. It's really good um, for so you can use it concentrated. I'm sorry? You can use it concentrated. You can, that's it. Most you can except those hot ones. Um, but it is wise to dilute, especially with children, especially with animals, you wanna dilute. Um, one thing I didn't go over is essential oils are 50 to 75% more potent than an herb. So when you're using these, you wanna use a drop, a drop or two. You don't need to slather yourself with them. Um, you know, when it says in the Bible, you pour a vat of oil over your head, that is not an essential oil. It was infused olive oil. Uh, so we just wanna make sure that we're not mixing it up in that way because you can't oversensitize yourself to them. Uh, where were we? Tea tree. So tea tree is another one that's kind of like a fix-all and it's very good for all things that are like funk, anything skin, anything um, that would be a fungus. Uh, so ringworm, uh, athlete's foot, um, it's like antiseptic, antibacterial, all the things that you would want to clean skin or smells. So the first three oils that we went over are actually what we're gonna talk about in our wound spray. Um, and we're gonna make some bottles later and see if, if you wanna make that one. Again. But that is one, like if I had to pick one, it's hard to pick one, but it would probably be tea tree it, for homestead use because everything is dirty. You know, you're really, you're gonna want to have something to make sure that it's, it's cleaned out if you, you have a wound or you're trying to treat something. Except that we don't treat things. Um, let's see. Oregano, I do not have it in here because it's actually by my chicken water right now. So I'll just talk about oregano. You don't want it anyway because you, you don't want to put it on your skin. Um, but oregano is a hot oil. It's, it's our antibiotic, really, and it's your antiviral. It actually outdoes penicillin when put into petri dishes and are you know side by side. And this is something that we put in our chicken water. Um, it is a harsh oil, so it's not something that you want to use all the time unless you're, it's low amounts. Um, but chickens do not have any heat sensors in their mouths, so that's why you can put it in their water. 
you would not ever want to put oregano in any of your other animals' water birds because they either one, wouldn't drink it, or two, their mouth would be on fire like yours. Um, but there are ways like capsules or diluting and putting them on the skin where you can still use oregano. Maybe you can get rid of the capsules. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you just <laughs> break them. In the so oregano. I'm sorry. That's just a drop or two, like in chicken water. Depending on what size water you mm -hmm. have, um, you don't. It doesn't have to be a science, but I'm pretty. I'm pretty liberal. I always say start low and increase to what you you feel you need or what to see a difference or what your tolerance is. Um, if I have a gallon water, I probably put ten drops in it. And I'll, I'll, what good is that for the chicken? That is going to help with worming. It's going to help with overall health. It's going to help with killing any bad bacteria that they may have gotten a hold of. Um, so sometimes I'll do that for like a week, two weeks. Some people do it all the time. You don't have to do it all the time. I do recommend following up with like probiotics at a different time in the waters just to replenish gut flora. Um, but it's just a way to keep them healthy. I have, I have a friend that did it every day. And when I went to her house, I was like, your chickens are massive. I mean, they were huge. And she said, I've just done it since I got them when they were little. And so then they don't lose nutrition because of maybe coccidia or um, any other parasite, you know, that we have around here. That's huge for our area. Everything we do is hindered by parasites. So from starting from day one with her, she was just super successful in doing that. So the skin too, instead of anything because I mean if those parasites are drawing they're drawing nutrients and they're damaging gut lining and that's just going to affect the bird overall and when you're using oregano um, you don't there's no withdrawal so if you have the butcher or if you're eating the eggs or whatever then it's totally fine now I will say I I love doing things naturally if you come to a point where you need a chemical wormer or something else, I'm all for it. And that, you know, that's your decision. I won't sit back and let my animals die if they need an antibiotic or a chemical wormer. You know, but I do what I can up front to just make sure that they have a fighting chance before we have to do any of that. Ferment is another really versatile one. Um, we already talked about it being really good for um, mice, spiders. Um, it's very good for uh, mastitis rubs. We're going to go over that. Uh, it's very good for nausea in people, um, headaches. Uh, it increases the oxygen in the body. So whenever you have any situation like fainting, you wave peppermint under your nose. That will wake you up. Um, I actually cut my finger pretty bad several years ago. and was about to faint and Sophia went and grabbed the peppermint and it brought me back instantly and actually took care of the nausea I was feeling too from seeing my finger almost gone. On guard is a blend that we use um, with this company. They have, you know, other companies have various forms of it, but what you're going to find in here is cinnamon, clove, rosemary, eucalyptus, and orange. And this is a big immune booster. It's also a big germ fighter. So this is something that we would make our cleaners with, our hand sanitizers, um, putting capsules to boost the immunity. Um, all, all of our cleaning stuff is made with this. This does have hot oils in it, so don't rub it on your nose. Just smell it. To me, it smells like fall. A lot of people in Louisiana say it smells like crawfish. I've actually like used my hand sanitizer in Walmart yeah. and people go, who smells like crawfish in here? It does smell like uh, But to me, I guess it's just because of the clothes in there and the cinnamon, but it smells like fall and apple pie to me. But that is actually um, very valuable. You're going to see it in our disinfectants and our cleaners and that's what I, I clean my uh, my coops with, my, my chicken hut, not chicken hutches, my chicken coops and my rabbit hutches so that I don't have to use so lemon's the last basic I'm going to go over. You know, obviously there's so many oils that you can have in your arsenal. Um, lemon is a very good cleaner. It's fresh. It's an astringent. It's a natural diuretic. Um, it, it dries up mucous membranes. So when you're dealing with either people or animals who are having respiratory issues or a lot of mucus, um, any of your citruses are going to go ahead and, and dry that up. It cleanses the liver. Um, and it smells really great in your house if you want to use that as a cleaner.
So that being said, we can go ahead and move forward. Um, fly spray. So if you have a farm or a homestead, you definitely have flies. There's no way getting around it. There are, there are other things you can do like fly predators. You can set you know the traps that smell terrible and things like that. But for your animals, um, sometimes chemical you know fly sprays are needed here. But if we can get away with something made out of essential oils, even better. Because when you're using that, it's also hope, helping the coat, it's helping the skin, and um, will probably be healing any type of scrape or um, abrasion that the animal has as well versus adding to its toxic load. So this is a fly spray that is just an example. You can go ahead and change the drops if you'd like. Um, you can use any type of you know liquid oil that you want, whether it's olive oil, avocado oil, fractured coconut oil. I mean, use what you have, but this is just a, a baseline. Um, and then when I put optional, these are pre-made blends that uh, the company, this is doTERRA, has. And so you can find pre-made blends sometimes with various companies. And there is a company in Pennsylvania that is called, I'm drawing a blank and I want to link it in here, Synergy, Synergy Animals, I think. I'm, I'm gonna check into that. But they have um, a lot of, especially for dairy animals, they have a lot of already mixed up essential oil products like utter creams and fly sprays and things of that nature. So when you have it at home, you obviously are going to get a bigger bang for your buck because you have a bottle that has, I think these are 280 drops in here or 250. So you're able to keep making your own and not having to ship in bottles, but if you don't want to make your own, there are good companies out there that sell pre-mixed um, and pre-made blends. So this can be used on everything, basically. Uh, I mean, you know, your horses, your goats, your cows, whatever you need. And it can be made into a fab. If you like to make fabs or you, you just look up a baseline, you can put the same oils into a salve and use maybe on like the tips of the ears of dogs. You know how they get chewed up pretty bad in the summer sometimes. Um, I have a horse that is actually allergic and reactive to bug bites. Um, so we can cover the tips of her ears with that. Okay, coop spray. So this is going to kind of be like the same recipe, but you can use whatever you have or you want as your coop spray. Um, whether you're just trying to spray for flies or you're trying to clean in there. Like I said, I use the On Guard cleaner. They have a concentrated cleaner or you can make your own that we're gonna go over with vinegar, oil, um, and some water. Uh, it depends on you know what your surface is like in there too. Do you have wood, do you have metal? How much are you going to need? Um, how's that graded and so on and so forth. Okay, a respiratory blend. Um, I don't normally have respiratory issues with my animals except for chickens. It seems like in our climate, because it's so humid and uh, hot and it just, it looks like the perfect breeding ground for respiratory health. And um, so this is something that I will use with my chickens. Again, I'll put some in the water. Um, are you familiar with the, like the Vet RX that you can get at Tractor Supply? It's a, an oil base that has essential oils in it. And it'll say to either put in the water or put on their head or make a spray. This is basically, it's the same thing, but you're gonna probably be using a higher grade oil to do this. And again, you can mix your own for cheaper. Um, I'll say it a million times, having your own apothecary is going to save you money in the long run every single time because you'll be able to mix up whatever you need across the board, whether it's for your animals, you, your plants, you just grab and mix up what you need. So I did put on here um, that you can put it in the water, you know, oregano, like I said with the other animals, um, only chicken, not the other animals. Okay, utter wash. Um, how many of you have, you have dairy animals? Anyone in here have dairy animals? Want to have dairy animals? Aspire to have dairy animals? Okay, great. <laughs> You're gonna need to know an utter wash. <laughs> Um, this is Stevie's Daisy, if you know Stevie. 
she was getting her snack while she was eating milk, and I just didn't thought she had the prettiest face. Um, so with utter wash, they can be they can be expensive, they can be toxic, they can be completely unnecessary in chemical form. This is really all you need. Really, you can get away with some Castile soap and some water, but we add in the tea tree um, for the antibacterial properties and the lavender to soothe. And then these are just some optional oils. So your frankincense, um, like we said, is very healing. Maybe if, if she's cracked or you know has some rough skin, eucalyptus can just be very good for um, the health of the udder. And peppermint, if your animal's lactation is not sensitive to it. Most aren't, um, but like people, you know, you just want to check. You don't want to do anything that's going to decrease their milk production. So I just mix that together in a spray bottle and I use, you know, paper towels or rags. If you're using rags, you're, you know, you want to wash them daily. You don't want to be reusing them because of bacteria. Um, but utter wash is what is going to be needed every time you milk to have sanitary milking to prevent mastitis. And it, it's not just for cows. Cows go um, doesn't make a difference. So this is an utter cream. Um, use whatever you want, like your natural lotion or cream. Um, well, we put in the tea tree again for the antibacterial properties, lavender to soothe. Now basil, fennel, and copaiba increase milk production. So that's why I added it into my cream. Um, and this works for humans as well. So those three oils, if used daily, either in a cream or in a capsule or on food, it's just going to help them make more milk. And, and so does feeding an extra you know, ration or you want to make sure that your animals are not pulled down by how much milk they are producing. And then you have your optional oils again. I like to say that mixing essential oils, when you're making something, it's like cooking. You know, you just, there's no complete science to how many drops you have to use of something. Make your ratio work for what you want. If you like the smell of something else, go ahead and change it. Um, you know, when you're not doing something specific where you need, you know, a property of one of these oils. So, utter cream, that's a, that's a every time we milk for us. If you get to the point where your animal does get mastitis, um, this is what I have used to treat it. So actually this goat kid in the picture, um, this was the first time she nursed after I treated her mother from having acute mastitis uh, with this mastitis cream and capsules. So I also do empty gelatin capsules and I will bolus them just like you would with copper for goats or um, you know, a sulfur medicine for calves or something like that. So again, your natural lotion or cream, tea tree, lavender, peppermint, eucalyptus, oregano, thyme, frankincense, lemon, and marjoram. Um, so I think we've gone through all of them leading up to thyme, but thyme is, is much like oregano. Okay, it's a hot oil, um, the same type of antiviral, antibacterial properties. Lemon, like we said, is very cleansing and is going to um, help break up any type of clumping that is in the udder at the moment, helping flush it out. And you just want to make sure they're getting enough fluid. And marjoram is an anti-inflammatory. So marjoram is a great one. People, not a lot of people know about marjoram, but it's an anti-inflammatory, whether it's respiratory, mammary, um, body, nervous system, anything, marjoram is going to be something that you sneak in there to help with those anti-inflammatory properties and paired with frankincense always going to work even better. Now peppermint, whereas we said be careful with the other creams if your animal is sensitive to it, in the mastitis rub I, or capsule I always include peppermint because you actually, you know, you don't want your production to be amped up where it continues to agitate the animal so it's not going to hurt them. Um, if their production dips a little bit. And then later when they're clear, you can go ahead and add in your fennel, the basil, the copaiba, and you know, boost them back up. But if you have nursed, you know that if you have a clogged duct or if you have mastitis, the more you're producing, actually the more painful it is. So with this cream, you're also going to massage. I should have written that up there. Um, but you're gonna put it on and as much as you can massage it in, better help break up any type of clog or clumping um, and get it deep into that tissue and afterwards if you want to put 
maybe a hot rag over it to open those pores and just kind of help it seep in even better. Okay, disinfectant spray. So these are um, just two examples uh, of sprays that you can use. We have one for services and one for hands. Um, the base can be grain alcohol, Everclear, 190 proof. You might <laughs> turn during the quarantine when I went and stocked up on this. I may have looked like an alcoholic when I was at the grocery store, but I was really just trying to make hand sanitizer um, and have uh, cleaners at home. And the reason that that's as good instead of the isopropyl is it, it's different on the skin. It doesn't take away that um, good barrier that you have on your hand or dry them out really bad. So if you only have isopropyl, I mean, it's better than nothing. But if you can use that Everclear, that will be, or some grain alcohol, that will be even better. Um, then distilled water. The reason you wanna go with distilled or like a very filtered water is if you're going to keep something in a bottle, you want to decrease any chance of anything growing in there. Now, if you have, you know, for this, if it's anti-bacterial um, or a disinfectant spray, it's not gonna grow in there anymore. It's just not. But that's just a good rule of thumb for anything that you make to go ahead and use distilled water. Just get in the habit of it. And so this one we use on guard, that on guard blend, the immunity blend that we were talking about. But down here I put what is in it. So the orange, the rosemary, the clove, the eucalyptus, cinnamon, and thyme. And then abode is another um, germ fighting blend that they have uh, that is highly effective. So in petri dishes, these actually outperformed Lysol, bleach. Um, and so Clorox, we always think that things have to smell like Clorox because it's clean. And it's just what we're programmed to think. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be toxic in order to be clean. Uh, the studies that were done actually showed that with this blend, um, I think it was three drops of oil in you know, this 32 ounces. And they sprayed surfaces and didn't even wipe them. And up to seven days later, there was still nothing growing that could harm you. That's pretty powerful. So for the hands, same type. Um, you're probably gonna put it in a smaller bottle. You don't have to, but you probably will. Um, and then you're gonna add in fractionated coconut oil, just you know, for a little bit of sticking power or moisturizing. You don't wanna keep drying your hands out like that. You could also use aloe. So this is something that, like I said, you could use for the surfaces in your home. You could use it in your coops and cages. You can use it in your milking area, um, just to have good practice of not spreading anything around. Okay, wound spray. This is actually my horse, and she did this this week. Lucky us, huh? I don't know how she did it, um, but it provided a picture for a good wound spray. Uh, this is what I was telling you about earlier with the lavender tea tree and frankincense. That's kind of like your go-to with healing anything, whether it's animals, people, that's our wood spray, our ouchie spray, some people call it. Um, and then if you have these other oils, which are really like the big guns, and some of them are pretty pricey, those are great. So helichrysum, myrrh, sandalwood, that's all going to help with scarring, feel that tissue um, uh, healing back to almost the point where a lot of times you how it happened. Geranium actually increases blood flow to that area, so that will promote healing, obviously. Black pepper does the same, but I don't think you want to put black pepper on a wound. But it is very good to um, take internally if you need any other type of healing to increase circulation. So this can be put in um, fractionated coconut oil, olive oil. Uh, I like to use fractionated coconut oil just the same. Your olive oil and your avocado oil can be very thick, but if it's all you have on hand, use it. Uh, the reason that we don't always just use water is one, it doesn't hold and stick very well, but two, especially when we're dealing with um, the hotter oils, so oil and water don't mix, right? And so when you get a hot oil on you, or you use it in a spray and you use water, it's actually going to drive it deeper into the skin. So your first reaction if something's hot is to wash it off, right? With an oil, you want to use an oil. So use, you know, whatever is in your kitchen, what you can get a hold of. Um, my, I like to tell my husband sometimes.
happened when we first got our oil. He, he remembered that I had put some type of herb on his nose to help his sinuses open up. It was basil. And I wasn't home. And he went in here and he goes, okay, it was green. Which one do I to use? He chose thyme. Okay, so he slathered that all over his face. And then when he realized it was getting hot, he went to the sink and went to wash it off. And when it was getting hotter, then he remembered hearing me teach in class that you're supposed to use a carrier oil. And it clicked in and he went and did that. And I said, okay, well now you're an example of what not to do when you use a hot oil. But that's also something we don't want to do to our animals. So this one sprays, go clean it. It will help heal it. And this is what I used on my finger when I told you I was cut it off. I actually didn't even look at it, I didn't even wash it, because it, I did it washing dishes anyway. I put those oils on there, I covered it with a band-aid, and I was so afraid to open it, that I didn't open it for like a week. And when I did, you could not even see, like you could barely see the scar on my finger. Um, and I almost lost the whole tip. So I was pretty impressed. That was early on in, in my getting to know oils and, and knowing the usage. But that is a pretty baseline. Okay, garden pest spray. So I'm gonna show you these, and they're gonna be different, um, different effectiveness at different times of year, and they're going to be much more effective in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, you know, or Northern part of the United States, I should say. We, we have a few bugs here. Sometimes it, we can really get it to work, and then some, um, like, like leaf-footed bugs, those are rough. You can get it right on them, it'll kill them. Um, I don't think it's going to deter them for too long, but it does help with this blend. Again, you're gonna get tired of hearing this, but that on guard blend is kind of just like a magical go-to. Um, in desperation, one day I only had my bottle cleaner, which was from the concentrate and water, and I put some extra lemon and on guard in it. And I just grabbed my cleaner one day and started spraying my tomatoes because I didn't have time to make up a separate one. And I was like, well, it's either gonna fix them or kill them, we'll see and it worked. So that is something that, so I just able to take my house cleaner and go outside and spray it. But you can definitely use different combos. I'm gonna have a chart in here that shows, excuse me, um, what oils go to what bugs. And I, there are different graphics online and things like that. It would take us forever to go over every single bug and you know, what oil we can get. But there are things you can do. At least we can try. Are y'all familiar with Castile soap? Okay, okay most people. Mm -hmm. You can order a big jug of Castile soap, the unscented off Amazon, and that's gonna be the baseline of a lot of these different sprays. Um, and, and what you can use in your shower or in your hand soaps or whatever. But that's a big DIY thing to have, so even though it would be a little pricier, I recommend getting the big jug and you have it for whatever you need. Would you use like the Dr. Bronner's peppermint and let that replace like peppermint oil in something or just stick with you the can unscented. use it but it's not going to be as effective like nowhere near but it's not harmful to use that one or would you it's, say probably not to be a cleaner company i don't mm. think it's going to kill your plants or anything mm. um but you're you're not going to get the effect that you're looking for without adding like the extra peppermint mm. no other than just smelling good in your shower mm -hmm. okay so your bug spray when you're choosing a carrier for a bug spray, you can choose an oil, witch hazel if you want that dry feel, um, or vinegar if you don't mind the smell. I'm not making it with vinegar, but that's what it is for the animals. So just know that you can choose different mediums and different combinations. You can do half and half or however you want to do it, whatever works for you. So these are some oil suggestions for your bug spray. I am also of <laughs> the thought pattern that like, Whatever I throw in that bottle for bugs, if it's fine and it's doing something good for me anyway, I'm gonna try it all. I'll just make a big cocktail and hope that, you know, nothing's gonna touch me. Salve is really um, effective in this way. I used to buy one from the farmer's market and uh, I would always put it on before I went out and milked and it was super effective. And again, optional, Terra Shield is the bug blend. Um, and Purify is actually a cleansing blend, but it has citronella in it and things like that that can just kind of boost whatever you're, you're making. Yeah. What would be the proportion? Uh, does it depend on the oil or? 
It depends on the oil, it depends on how big your bottle is. That's why I didn't put anything up there. It depends on what bugs you're really trying to target. And then is there a rule of thumb or how many drops per? Um, you can look up a dilution chart if you're worried about having too many oils to carry your oil. But especially when you're just spraying your body, you're never gonna like overdose, you know, on your oils. Um, and in our climate, like I said, I I err on the side of putting a lot in there and making sure that I'm really trying to keep them off me. I find that citronella and lemongrass um, and peppermint are the most effective. When you're putting these others in there, it does help. Um, and probably cedarwood too. I don't know if you've ever heard this, but when we went to Nepal, um, we traveled to Nepal actually with our oil company, and they told us to spray everything in cedarwood to make sure that we didn't get bugs in our suitcase. And that was pretty neat. I hadn't thought about that. Like you're here, you're here at the cedar closet, but you never think to spray your suitcase with it. Oh, one more thing about witch hazel. The witch hazel, because it evaporates, when you make a spray with witch hazel, no matter what you're using it for, or what type of spray it is, you're not going to get wet like you would with water. It's going to dry fairly quickly. Um, and so that's the whole point of using that. Not saturating yourself like water would and not getting an oily finish like with a carrier oil. Okay, I put this in here, not that I expected you guys to copy all of it or that we were gonna go over every single one, but I put it in there as a reference for the people who are going to look at the slide and get it through email, that you can go back and reference it or screenshot it. These are um, just recommended oils for different pets. Cats are not on there though, I'm sorry. <laughs> So yeah, mites and peppermint, gnats. So gnats and patchouli, that's something that I actually didn't even know before I, I found this list. Um, I was just using the regular bug spray with it. So I'm actually interested to add in the patchouli with my regular bug spray if we get in a bad season of gnats. I think it was last year or last fall, maybe after the hurricane, gnats were killing people's chickens. I don't know if any of you experienced that, but if you were in some areas, like we had to keep fans on things to keep the gnats off of, especially the babies, because they were, they were just killing them. Okay, and here it says mosquitoes, geranium, lavender, lemongrass, but they don't have on there citronella. I would say citronella should be there, um, and anything else that you can throw at these pterodactyls in the state. It's a free for all. With plants, plant and citronella everywhere you can. This yeah. was my first year of having a citronella plant, and the plant blew up. Really? And we had one, it's just one on the corner of my porch, and we do not get bit. But as soon as we step awesome. away from it, like yeah. off the porch, I mean, it's everywhere. Oh, so that's really good to know because I have lemongrass, but I don't have citronella. Yeah. In it. And then I'll, if so, if we're outside playing or if I'm going to water or something, mm. we'll break off the pieces and we just rub it all over us. And no one gets bit. That's good. So, yeah, that's awesome. And then if you have a porch area, if you have a diffuser, yeah, you can go ahead and put any of these oils in your diffuser, especially citronella, lemongrass, your blends. Um, and it's going to work just like the candles or, you know, the tiki torches that have other questionable things in them. Cleaning and disinfectant spray. So I know we already went over a disinfectant spray, but that was like your alcohol-based hand sanitizers or surface cleaners. This is going to be what you can actually like clean your kitchen with um, or your bathroom or whatever. Uh, so vinegar and distilled water. I should have put in there. It's optional. Well, I did put in there on your method. It's optional to use Castile soap in there also. Um, and here are like other fragrances, other options. Some people hate the smell of vinegar. If you're one of those people and you don't want to use vinegar in your home, don't. Use the Castile soap and water and the oil. Some people just use like lemon and water. You know, if that works for, you know, just surfaces and things, that's fine too. Um, it's just going to be what you want, you know, your house to smell like. I think rosemary and lavender would smell amazing. I've used thyme and that smells um, really herbaceous in your kitchen. 
And so anything that you're using in these sprays, you can also use in a diffuser and it's going to cleanse the air and surfaces by default also. Hand cleaner. These are my husband's hands. <laughs> and all of that, if we don't clean them, ends up in my white shower. So, um, you know, they have the, in the orange bottle, I don't even know what it's called, that the mechanics all use, that you can actually make that. And with, again, without the chemical load, and it's a little more effort, but if you make a big tub of it and just keep it around, you know, it can be really handy for the men in your life um, that may or may not be getting queasy. So pumice powder uh, with your soap, and it says soap flakes or shreds. Again, you can use Castile soap if you want. Um, it's just gonna be a little more thin. It depends on what consistency you want. Shea butter, and then, uh, your orange or lemon is what I would suggest. I'm sure mine would probably work just as well, as long as it's a citrus that's gonna cut that grease. And there are two different options here. It said either um, the ground cornmeal and oats, which I think the oats is probably for softening um, and maybe just a little texture in there, or you can use the walnut shell and the jojoba meal. And that one, you have to add a little bit of water to it to make it work. Um, I have not actually done that one, so. You can experiment and see which works best for you. Room spray, it's gonna be um, like the same as the disinfectants, except you're always gonna to wanna to use witch hazel for this. Again, it evaporates. Same thing for a linen spray. You don't wanna put water on your sheets or you're gonna have damp sheets, but witch hazel won't do that. And it won't um, land on your surfaces, make your couch damp, your floor slippery, any of that. So whatever you want to smell in your home as a freshener, as a disinfectant, um, in your bathrooms, as a poopery, you can go ahead and make any blend that you prefer. Is that my last slide? Are we there already? I guess so. I had so many on my list that I actually just picked ones that I thought would be really universal. Um, so if you have any questions about maybe a specific circumstance or animal or, or something, go ahead and ask and I'll be happy to try to answer it for you. Can we use the oils to make um, incense? Yeah, basically that's what it is. You know, you'd put it in a diffuser and it would put it into the air and you'd breathe it in that way. As far as making something that you would burn, um, I wouldn't know how to make an incense stick. I'm sure you could, but when you have high heat like that, the medicinal properties are actually negated. So that's why diffusing is... Um, diffusing would be better mm -hmm. over incense. Yeah, because you're going to put it in that mist in the air. And you know, I've had people ask, can I put it in my candle warmer? Same thing. You're going to okay. smell it, but those you know, medicinal properties are it's going to be... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, about using any uh, essential oil, I could be repeating, are there specific uh, diffusing whatever you want to smell or whatever purpose you are wanting to diffuse for, you can do any of them. Um, now oregano is, is going to be very good, you know, to still be killing germs and things like that. And you, but your house is going to smell like a pizza parlor. You know, it, it all depends on what it is that, that you prefer. Um, with your diffusing, your aromatherapy, of course, is going to be really big as far as just emotion, sleep. So you could switch it toward Sickness, air purification, um, trying to think of that so you would focus. Dilute, you would dilute those in water? So when you have a diffuser, diffuser, I should have brought that, I'm sorry. Right. Um, so you would plug it into the wall or they have battery ones. You'd put water in there to the fill line. You don't want to overfill or the diffusers won't work. Um, but you go to the fill line, you put the appropriate or, uh, amount of oils in there for the size of the diffuser or the size of the room. So anywhere between five to 10. Um, and then what it does is it creates a mist yeah. and just puts it in the air. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. so I used to be a teacher and I'm, I'm always telling teachers, you do not understand the power you have by diffusing in your classroom because you can help those kids focus. You can help uh, relieve stress for test taking. Uh, you can keep your room clean and all the you know things that are brought in it at bay, keep everybody healthy. Um, 
you know, wake them up in the morning, things that are energizing, calm them down after a reset. So that's, I mean, that's what we do in our home in every room. We have a diffuser in every room. So we just kind of translate that out to the animal, you know, in the homestead or whatever it is that we're trying to do out there. So even dogs, I didn't put that slide in there, dogs um, that maybe don't like fireworks or thunder or things that they're very, separation anxiety, you can use lavender. Uh, we use a blend called Serenity. Um, there's one called Balance. Vetiver is a good one. Just make sure you're diluting, putting on those paws. You can actually um, rub them together with coconut oil and it might make your dog a little bit greasy, but don't use a whole bunch and you can just pet through their hair. Um, if you're just petting them, you don't necessarily have to use coconut oil because it will get, you know, trapped in their hair. I do that sometimes to mine. It's like a just walking diffuser. My husband puts it in his mustache. Any way that you can breathe it in or absorb it through your skin, um, you're going to get the health properties of it. Or even hair growth. Okay, if you have horses. Um, I just got my pony back and her mane is this short. She had been rubbing it on so much fence. So we're using a blend um, of lavender, cedarwood, uh, tea tree, frankincense, rosemary along her mane to grow that back. And I've actually used that in the past when they've just completely ripped it off all and it grows back so fast and very luscious. You can do that on yourself too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, hot spots. If you ever have dogs that get hot spots, you can use it. I would use um, I would use the witch hazel version first because you, you want it to dry up either by itself or, or witch hazel and then go back with the coconut oil and soothe it to get that hair regrowth. I'm sorry, did you have a question? The essential oils that we purchase, they'll say 100%, but that's not always the case. Right. That's why it's important to know your company and that they have testing. Um, the library wants to keep us like non-branded and not necessarily talking about a lot of you know specific brands. So if you want to talk to me later, I'll do that. Do they expire? Do they expire? Yeah. Yes. So they have an expiration date. They're not going to go bad on you. They're just not going to be as effective as the day you open the bottle because they will oxidize. You don't want to leave them out in the sun on the counter, um, things like that. But you don't have to keep them tucked under. You know, these stay on my counter in my bedroom, just not by the window. Um, and, they, and these have the amber bottles that help protect against that. Also, clear would be a little, a little more um, expensive. And when you do your mix, where do you keep it? I'm sorry? When you do your bottle. Oh, okay. So depending on what I'm using it for, I keep it in my caddy underneath my kitchen sink, like with my cleaners. Um, I have little baskets or organizational things where I will keep my animal medicines. So I'll keep those all together with that. Tack room. Um, if, if I have it in a, an outdoor place, I try not to leave it there too long just because it gets hot. And doesn't mean I have to throw it out or that it's just not gonna work at all. It's just less effective, you know, once that happens. But it also, um, very good to use glass bottles if you can. Or I think it's number two plastic if you have to use plastic because um, normal plastic, the oils will actually leach the toxins out of it. So like if you're drinking oil, excuse me, in your water, you don't want to use like a solo cup or plastic cup. You want to go ahead and use glass or stainless steel. Is there something that you would recommend for like allergic reaction type things? Like my son is super... Like he gets a bug bite and it's massive. Lavender. So lavender is like Benadryl. It's your antihistamine. Um, but likewise, some people who who have like the reverse effects with Benadryl may also have that with lavender. So you just have to look out for that. Some people who are trying to calm kids down and use lavender are like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. You know, through the roof. That has to do with how your liver processes and is normally but not always linked to Native American blood. It just has. Um, very strong connection there. So for people who are like that, we would say use wild orange, which is normally energizing, um, and a blend called Balance. So like any of the other calming oils, like Vetiver, just omit the, the lavender if you find that to be the case. I've read different things about using lavender with boys. Are those things true or just, okay. They're not true. 
Mm -hmm. If you guys go home tonight and start Googling, you will be afraid and you will never use another essential oil again. But that being Stop. said, I mean, use them with caution. If it's a medicinal grade, it should be used, you know, with that type of respect. Um, but just use wisely. And, and don't listen to every mommy blogger out there. And every person that tells you if you put it on your animals that they're all going to die. You know, don't do that. Um, but I do want to say one thing back to your question about Amazon. So we all know that... We have to read the reviews on Amazon, right? Well, even the re reviews aren't going to help us here. There are scammers out there that will adulterate an oil bottle and even buy a well-known company, and they will empty them, dilute them, put other things in them, and it's so easy to buy these caps and pop them on and seal them where they haven't been opened. And so people think that they are getting oils from the company, and they are not. And I have several graphics of just even the creams being poured out side by side, they're completely different. Um, I had someone doing some of the things that I was teaching and taking them internally and she got very sick because she was using it from an unknown source. So um, be very wise in that. Be before I knew any better, I used one that was labeled like Eden's Garden and put it in my bathtub for a detox bath and went almost psychedelic. Was vomiting, uh, room was spinning, it was extremely scary. So. When, when they're dealing with stuff like that and you don't know the actual company and the actual test results, then you can be in trouble. Um, on these, with the expiration date, there's a lot number. There's actually a website that you can plug it into, source2u.com, and it will tell you where it was from, the test results, um, what country it was harvested from, all the details there. So you do want to really dig into looking at you know what you're using and not just running to your own source. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, I have some bracelets just to you know, yeah. little information. They have the little beads on them where you can put the oil. I love those. Yeah. And, and they have come out with some really pretty jewelry recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so you can you know, walk around. They make dog collars like that now. Where you can put, you know, if you have an anxious dog, you can put those oils on the dog collar. Um, and, and do remember that there's, those are very, very sensitive. So you want to use very little and dilute. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of things you can do with that. Thank you for sharing. And if you guys have any other recipes and want to share, I can always add it to the slide to go out. Um, like I said, these are just examples. You can make it your own, experiment, um, look things up on Pinterest. Just do so wisely. You know, we don't want to listen to every Yahoo out there. Are there places on the body that you recommend trying things out with over others? Depending like, on how sensitive you are. Okay, so. I have never had any type of, of issue topically, even not diluting. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are very fair skinned, do it on a tougher part of the body. When we are applying for effectiveness, we'll do on the bottoms of the feet because you have very high absorbency there, spine, back of neck. Um, you, any type of pulse point is fast absorption, you know, versus you know, something that wouldn't be mm -hmm. on a pulse point. You might want to try your hand or something like that, um, palms. If you're, you know, really worried, um, and I start low and slow, you can always increase. And oils are when we're trying to get an effect from them, it's frequency and consistency. So they're okay to repeat every 30 minutes until you get the desired effect. What you don't want to do is use 20 drops all at once. It's not going to do anything different other than just overload and can possibly sensitize you. Does that make sense? But if you have, like, say, a headache and you're trying to get rid of it reapply every 30 minutes. Um, quick tip for a headache, if you have frankincense or wintergreen or something, put it on your thumb and press it to the roof of your mouth or peppermint um, and that will go up through your palate and start to open all of this up. And it